Hi, my name is Samantha. Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is going to be a quick review of my brother SE600 sewing machine. Let's get into the video. I just have a couple notes here of things that I want to make sure I share with you guys about my sewing machine. I did buy this exactly one year ago. I bought it uh, well, I take that back. I bought it April 9th, but it was delivered April 13th of 2020. And I paid $369 for it. I actually purchased my sewing machine through Home Depot instead of Walmart or Amazon. When I was looking around uh, for my sewing machine, one, all the shelves were empty. This was in the height of the pandemic. You couldn't buy sewing machines. You couldn't buy... Uh, thread, you couldn't buy fabric. I'll insert pictures here if I have any of all of the things that were just empty at the store. So it was very hard to get my hands on a sewing machine. And when I was looking at the sewing machine, I was debating, you know, do I get the, the $400 machine that also does embroidery or do I just get the lowest model I can that just does straight stitch zigzags, which that is all you need. If you're looking to buy a sewing machine or you're looking to make a sewing business, all you need is a simple sewing machine. The $70 one at Walmart will work fantastic. You do not you do not need 70 different kinds of stitches. That's my next point. So I have all a million kinds of stitches on my machine because I have the uh, fruity tooty, whatever word you want to use, fancy sewing machine. I have barely used any of those stitches. I just started using those stitches when I started making my key fobs. And I did this intentionally because one, I wanted to differentiate my key fobs from other people's key fobs. And two, I was like, gosh darn it, I'm going to use these fancy stitches. So check out my key fobs in my Etsy shop. The embroidery feature is the reason why I splurged on the bigger sewing machine. So the ones I was looking at, I was looking at Brother Machines and I was looking at the lower model that just has simple stitches and then I was also looking at the embroidery and I personally love embroidered things and it was more of a is it for my business is it for myself is it for gifts like why am I going to spend more money and also during this time is when I got the first stimuli stimulus check so that was another factor too and so I went ahead and splurged. I debated on this though for probably two days, like every day or like all day, every minute of the whole day, all I was thinking about is which sewing machine am I gonna buy? And I was so on the fence, I did not know what to do. And at the end of the day, I just said, screw it. I'm gonna get the $400 machine and whether or not I use the embroidery, I know I want it for myself. If I don't end up using it for my business, then that's okay. And I bought it new because I wanted to make sure that if there was any issues and I needed to return it, I could return it or it would still be under warranty. Any of the software was up to date. Nobody messed with it. Like, I think it's fantastic if you find a sewing machine on Facebook Marketplace or for free. That's great. However, you could end up spending more money than a new machine if you have to go get it serviced. And if there's many major issues with it, if you have to get parts replaced inside. So... I try to not be super materialistic and try to not be a bad consumer and buy new things all the time, but certain items, especially because this was for my business and I wanted to make sure that it worked without a doubt, I just went ahead and purchased new. And I have used the embroidery feature, definitely not as much as it's capable of. Same thing with the stitches, like it has so many features, but I just do not use them all. I have made a lot of embroidered napkins. Again, I'll insert pictures here if I have stuff. Uh, I've made embroidered napkins, embroidered towels. I've made a bunch of embroidered gifts. I made my family embroidered stockings this year. That was a lot more to undertake than I thought it would be, but they're so cute and now it's like a keepsake that we'll have forever. So I definitely learned a lot too. Um, so the Brother SE600 only has a four by four, four inch by four inch, uh, embroidery space. So mine and my sister's names both have eight letters, whereas my brother's name has five. It has six letters. So six letters versus eight letters is a big difference in the width. So definitely that's something to keep in mind. Like if you're looking to do things that are 
names or long words. So like my name is Samantha. If I put Sam on something rather than Samantha, it would look much better because it's bigger. Having my whole name doesn't look very good with my sewing machine, to be honest with you, because it's not enough space. You need like five or six inches uh, to have an eight letter word or name, in my opinion. It still is legible, but from a distance, like looking at the fireplace and then like walking in the living room, it doesn't look as good. Definitely the names that have less letters looked much better. And they're also much clearer when they're stitched out because it's a bigger amount of space. Also in this time, I have cleaned and changed the needle on my sewing machine many times. So I will definitely upload a video on how to clean your sewing machine and how to change the needles. And it has been so simple. I really, like I looked up one tutorial and I did it. And since then I've just done it frequently and I have definitely kept up with the maintenance of my sewing machine so that knock on wood up to this point, I have not needed to go to a service or a sewing machine shop. Some of my favorite features about my sewing machine are the self-feeding needle. So I just thread my thread through and then I have this little lever on the side and it, poof, it puts the thread into the needle and that is a godsend. It is fabulous. I love that. Something else it has is a top bobbin, which is so helpful. If you've ever used a side loading bobbin in the metal canister, you know that those are so frustrating and it like never works right. So changing the bobbin is so simple on my machine. And also my machine, I can take, because it's an embroidery machine, I can take the pedal off, uh, like the foot pedal, I can take it off and I can use the button and say go. And then I could just use it. This is awesome because I could sew on the couch and just hit go and I don't need a pedal. I could sew on a high counter and just hit go and sew. I also use it a lot when I am threading a bob, or not threading, when I'm winding a bobbin because I go ahead and I just get my bobbin going and then I hit go and then I'm adjusting my other bobbins. I always use this time to clean my bobbin box. I have a case. I have a case here with all my bobbins. See, I just wound a bobbin last night so it's all clean. So I go ahead and I make sure everything's rolled nicely and everything's organized and this helps me keep up with all my threads. Another great feature is that it came with embroidery designs. So as I was saying, like I have not used all the features that comes with embroidery. That's because there's a whole nother avenue of going online, purchasing designs, or having a software that then you can create your own embroidery. I have not delve into this. I have not figured out how to do this. I have enough things on my plate right now that I don't need that added to it. But I have used you know, the embroidered letters, I've used the fonts a lot. The biggest thing I've done is using the fonts as a word and just writing a word is what I've used it a lot for. And then another thing is the buttonhole. So depending on your machine, you might have, I think it's like a four step or a two step or one step buttonhole. I might be wrong there, but different machines have different levels of automatic buttonholes. And for mine, it is one, I just go and it does all four sides once I have adjusted the foot to be the correct size and it is fantastic. I've only done it a couple times. I don't do that much clothing uh, sewing. Most of the items that I make are useful or practical so I haven't done as much clothes. I do have some fabric and some patterns that I do want to make some clothes with. I just haven't gotten into that aspect yet but definitely all these features are a step up from what I was saying of the cheaper machine. Most of the cheaper machines do not have these features, but it does make a big difference. When I'm able to go through a project, like last night I was working on 100 coasters, and I changed, I stacked them in light colors, so I would have to change the thread the least amount possible, and I think I changed the thread five times, thread and bobbin, on a machine that you are frustrated and you have changing the thread, changing the bobbin is annoying or it's frustrating, then that takes an aspect out that makes it less enjoyable to just be able to go in and sew and get the job done. For me, I don't mind changing the thread. I don't mind changing the bobbin. It's not an issue. So that's definitely something that I really like about my machine is that it makes it so simple. In the past year, I have stitched, drum roll please, 1 million 256,614 stitches. That is insane. And my sewing machine has worked wonderfully. I have broken many needles, my fault, I'm learning. This is my first year sewing 
uh, I've learned how to sew, you know, when I was in high school and I've done a couple projects here and there, but like every day sewing, I sew for probably six to eight hours every day. Uh, I've learned so much. My sewing skills have improved so much. Practice does make perfect. I'm not perfect. I try my best to be, but it's not perfect. So I looked up how the rate at which my sewing machine sews or does stitches and it sews at a rate of 710 stitches per minute. Now I'm assuming that this is pedal to the metal all the way down 710 stitches per minute. So obviously every time that I'm stitching is not this fast. Most of the time I do stitch at full speed, but you know, you're going around curves, you're going around corners, you have to back stitch. you know, there are times when you're not going at full speed. Anyways, so if I were sewing at full speed with a million stitches, uh, or a million and how many I said, that would mean that I spent 1,769 minutes sewing, like actually doing stitches. And in hours, this is 29 hours. That is insane. But it's definitely not how much time I spent sewing because there's so many more aspects to just running your fabric through the sewing machine. There's the time it takes to shop, to wash, to iron, to cut, to trim, to pin. There are so many other aspects to sewing than just running your fabric through the needle and thread. So I can't even imagine how many hours I've logged. It would be interesting in the next year to like, I don't know, do like a stopwatch kind of thing. I don't know if I wanna know how many hours I've spent sewing in the next year, but it has definitely been a great experience. I was really on the fence about buying the sewing machine because I already do paper crafting. And if you know anything about crafting, when you introduce a new machine or a new um, niche or whatever word you wanna use, so I was doing paper crafting and then sewing. When you introduce this new thing, there's a whole nother laundry list of items that you need. When you buy your sewing machine, you're not done. You need fabric, you need thread, you need needles, you need elastic, you need buttons, you need clips, you need so many other things. So and with all that comes space. <laughs> so this is all my sewing items right here. And then I have a whole nother bookcase of stuff for my paper crafting. So that's another thing is like you end up with so much stuff. And I was so, I wanted to get my sewing machine well before the pandemic. But I didn't want to because I knew like I already have my crickets. I already have all my paper crafting items. I don't need a whole nother rabbit hole to go down. But it has been a very good experience and I'm glad I have. It's definitely, uh, definitely a good life lesson too. You know, knowing things on how to hem your own items. I bought a dress for Valentine's Day on clearance at Kohl's. It was about $10, I think, or $8.00. And it was way too big. I'm a short person, so clothes normally do not fit me well. And it's very annoying. I don't like wearing pants because most of the time they do not fit me. So I much prefer wearing a dress. But the dress has to be above my knees or else I look like an Oompa Loompa. So it's very frustrating. I don't like clothes shopping. But anyways, so I bought this dress. And because I had my sewing machine and I had a couple skills, I was able to trim off some of the straps, some of the bottom. And I actually trimmed off over six inches that's insane. That's six inches of fabric that I had to cut off to then make it appropriate for me to wear. So, but if I didn't have these skills or I didn't have the machine, then I just wouldn't have bought it. Or I would have had to pay to go get something hemmed. And paying to go get something hemmed, there's the time, there's the if they screw up the item, there's the cost. So if you are looking to get a sewing machine, but you're like on the fence and you don't really like know whether or not you should or not, I would say just jump in, get the cheap machine, get yourself some fabric, go thrifting for your fabrics. Uh, check out one of my videos on that if you don't know if it's worth it or not. And just do it and see what happens. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that I inspired you to start sewing or to make a decision on which sewing machine you'd like to get. I highly recommend the Brother SE 600. If you have the money to be able to buy it, I would definitely suggest buying it. If you don't and you just want to get something that's a lower model, I would definitely suggest that too. Just 
dive in and do it and you're going to get your money's back. If you hem a couple pants or you hem a dress or you make a couple napkins or you make a couple gifts, it's just an amazing machine to have. And if we go through anything again like we did last year where masks or something that you need to sew or a handmade item is so important and it's not accessible, sewing machines were not accessible last year. Having it on hand right now while it is accessible is so important. Get yourself two color threads, get yourself a little bit of fabric, and just have it on hand for when you need it. If you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, please do so now, and I'll meet you over at my surging unboxing video. Bye for now.